On today's episode, we have a new product for you guys. It is the Faction Motorsports Power Steering Cooler and Reservoir Kit for left-hand drive S13s, KA or SR20. We've kind of got fed up with seeing all these janky power steering cooler setups coming to the shop. You know, what do they use to make them? Those uh, angle iron, but like with the holes in it? Yeah. yeah, like an L bracket. An L bracket from Home Depot, and they'd be hanging off the side right in front of the wheel, and then the wheel just eats it. Or they'll be like out on the bash bar, and that's like a danger zone. <clears throat> on the bash bar, mounted on the radiator. Yeah, kind of a, well, the bash bar is kind of a danger zone, so you don't want to put it there. So we kind of came up with a design that would, that would mount this cooler somewhere safe, but also using factory mounting locations, basically in a way, yeah. So this is what we came up with. So we're gonna go over it, we're gonna show you the parts we include in the kit, and we'll do a little install video. Hopefully it's enough. We, uh, we kinda just ripped this off of a car and now we're gonna reinstall it. So it's not gonna be the most perfect install video, but it should give you an idea of how to do this. So let's go over everything. All right, so the main attraction of the kit would be the cooler itself. So the cooler we use in this kit is the Koyo Rad 19 row universal oil cooler. This is used in D1, uh, Street Legal, D1 GP. The best cooler you can buy. <laughs> the best cooler money can buy, right here. All right, branded everywhere, Koyo Rad, Koyo Rad. You're gonna be looking cool as hell when someone pops the hood. All right, what else we got here? These are custom brackets we are having made to mount the cooler to the rad support. You will see when we go to install it where they bolt up. Zip tie. Little little tree zip tie. You can mount it into a, a, a factory hole in the engine bay. Again, you'll see when we go and install it. All stainless steel hard, hardware for mounting the cooler, mounting, you're gonna see the reservoir relocation. It's gonna help with that. We got two hose clamps. These do not bite into the hose. So they're smooth on the inside. So they will not rip the hose. That's the reason we went with these. If you have your own hose clamps you want to use, go for it, but these were the ones that we were thinking would be best for this. Then we get on to the next, the next bit, which is going to be power steering rack fittings. These are the tight fit fabrication fittings. These are the best fittings we've found yet on the market, so we decided to include them in this kit. We're trying to make a kit where you can just buy it and you take care of like, you kill like three birds with one stone with this kit. That way you kind of just get this and you don't have to worry about your power steering system ever again. So tight fit fabrication fittings, we include ORB to dash six AN. Two of these fittings, these are gonna go here. So we'll show you those in the install as well. And then we have a power steering pump fitting. This is a dash 10 AN fitting for your power steering pump. And then we have the lines. So these lines are gonna come pre-assembled. We assembled them here in the shop. Uh, they come with dash six AN fittings. Everything's gonna line up perfectly. Uh, you'll see in the install. The lines are from Vibrant. They are push on style flex hose. So this is our preferred method. We don't really, first of all, you don't need stainless steel braided lines. So if you can avoid doing that, we just choose to because this looks more factory and it's a little bit more sleek than having stainless steel braided lines for every line in the car, even though it's not necessary. So these are, these are what we're gonna be using in this kit. I'm a, I'm a big fan of these push style fittings. A lot of other people are too that go to Club Loose and other tracks, so. We do use the clamps that they suggest to use. Um, I know some people don't use those clamps. This is just like an added safety precaution. You kind of don't even need these, but we like to add them anyway because it's a little bit more professional. And they also come with line clamps to keep them organized. And these will go right, right next to the frame rail. So it'll keep them where they should be. That's the general gist of what it comes with. Well, the, the nice thing about these is if you're on the track, and for some reason you, you crash your car and then there's a hole in one a part of the hose you go to the parts store you cut this off you slip it right back on you're back on track yeah that's true too i didn't even think about that so that's nice yeah same thing with this one you know it's as opposed to a nylon yeah because it is a push on <clears throat> fitting it's not like a stainless steel braided line where it's you know you have a whole process to put the AN fitting on it. You yeah. can kind of just, you could use this as a normal hose, which is what we use on one end of it. It just kind of goes on with a hose clamp. Mm -hmm. So, 
Um, Where's the uh, high pressure line? That would help too. And this is the high pressure power steering line we include in the kit. Stainless steel braided with crimped on AN fittings. Slightly longer than I would like, but it, it gives you the option to put it wherever you want, depending on your setup. You'll see as we install it. Tools you will need. Tools. <laughs> Pretty simple. Just a generic drill. This is a 15 64 drill bit. Some type of ratchet with a 10 mil. A five millimeter Allen socket. Optional, either extension with a seven millimeter socket or a Phillips head screwdriver. 10 mil wrench, 17 mil wrench, and an adjustable or a 25 millimeter. Did you really go through all this? Yes. We'll see. Uh, another thing we want to mention, this kit uses the stock power steering reservoir. If you do not have this, you're going to have to be doing some DIY custom stuff to this kit because this kit is designed for this reservoir. Okay. You will see. Okay. All right, let's get to the car. This is a 240SX converted to a Sylvia front end, but this kit will work with pop-up front ends and Sylvia front ends. So that's the first thing. All right, as you come down here to the front, and this being a Sylvia front end, I'm, I'm assuming you guys already know how to install a Sylvia front end, but if not, we'll go over it real quick. Basically, these brackets right here are different from a pop-up bracket. We sell these on the website as well. And then you gotta swap these ones out, put the Sylvia ones in, and then have Sylvia fenders and install the headlight. That's it. The headlight bolts to these brackets and the fenders. So there's, no, there's nothing else to it, really. So that being said, we removed this one already. You'll see why. The, this, is the, this is a situation where you're going to have to have these, and if you don't, you're going to have to custom make them. These are factory mounting tabs for the OEM bumper. So the bumper, the bumper cover would sit right here, and then the, it would come up to here, and I think there's plastic rib nuts or plastic, plastic, clips. plastic clips that connect it to this. Now, some people have ripped these off before. I don't know why, maybe to make it cleaner in the front end, but... I've always been I've always been looking for a reason for these to, like a reason to keep these things and we finally found one So you can mount a lot of things to these depending on what your needs are But for this video, we're gonna show you why you need them for the cooler kit Another thing to note is this kit will not work with an AC condenser So if you have AC this kit is not for you The cooler is gonna mount right where the AC condenser is So keep that in mind so this is where this bracket usually sits. We've removed it already to kind of show you what we're gonna do with this. This is a Sylvia bracket, but like I said, this will work with a 180SX front end as well, or a pop-up front end. It's just slightly different how you mount them. All right, first step to the install cooler or B fittings. Just gonna install these first. You got your fittings. Now we're just gonna tighten them up. So installing the cooler, we like having the sticker show facing you and on the car. On the car, it's going to mount something like this. Something like that. So we're going to put the brackets on. We're not going to tighten them yet. We're just going to leave them hand tight. So just keep in mind which one's the top. So the top bracket, this is the top bracket. That's the smaller L bracket. This is the bottom one. The orientation, you're going to put this on the outside like that. Just like so. And we're going to put some hardware through it. So like I said, we're not tightening this down just yet. Gonna leave it a little loose. And then for the bottom bracket, this is a little tricky how to set this up. So if you could see here that the hole is not on the center, it's off to one side. That is going to face the front of the car. So when you put this on, this is facing the front of the car. And then the side holes line up with the f furthest forward uh, holes on the, uh, the cooler. Again, we're not tightening it. Just make it a hand tight. 
Just for the record, we are using the small 10 millimeter hardware. Okay, that's it. So, damn, I did forget a tool. I knew you were gonna forget one. <laughs> Another tool I forgot to mention, a 3 8 ratchet, a 12, mm, 12 millimeter deep socket, and a 12 millimeter wrench. So the first thing to do to the, to the install is on the right side of your hood, hood latch, you're gonna remove this bolt and we're gonna replace it with a longer one. Don't mind me, I'm just a director, right? I'm just directing. Mm -hmm. So in the kit, we are providing a longer 12 millimeter bolt with a nut. Don't need the nut right now, but the bolt that we removed from the hood latch, we're replacing it with a longer one. Just slightly longer, not too much. Not too much, not by much. Not too much. So now we're gonna install this here. Always wanna hand thread it first. Don't wanna cross threads. We're gonna take two more small 10, mil 10 millimeter nuts and we're gonna grab the cooler. All right, so we got our cooler with the brackets loosely fastened. We got two more 10 millimeter bolts. And then the orientation is this way. Uh, it's a little bit tricky getting this mounted, but it's not too bad. So at the bottom, I run it bolts facing down, and that's on the bottom. Okay, everything is just hand tight for now. All right, and then in here, up here, a little bit difficult mm -hmm. so this just goes on to that longer bolt so 12 millimeter nut we're just going to hand thread that on it's a little difficult to get to but we'll get it on eventually okay everything's hand tight right now so what you want to do is you want to just take the cooler push everything as close to the radio as possible once you do that, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to tighten the brackets on the reservoir, not on the car itself. Now the top bracket is a little bit difficult to get to. Um, what you want to do is you want to tighten the 12 millimeter nut first just a little bit just not moving around and then you want to tighten the two top 10 millimeters now that the brackets are tight on the reservoir now you can start tightening everything else to the car so that 12 millimeter I'm going to tighten up and then the 10 millimeters on the bottom. Again, you can see how it shifts just a little bit. You want to push it as far back as possible. That's it. Cooler is mounted, nice and sturdy. Now we're going to do the lines. After the cooler is mounted, you don't want to put any of the brackets back just yet because we still have to tighten down all the lines. So front end is after everything's installed. All right, so since we didn't have a donor car for this project, we had to use one that we already installed this on. So that's gonna kind of make this a little, a little less informative, but we're gonna do our best. All right, so the factory power steering reservoir is located on the left strut tower. It's usually mounted right around here. And all we do to the, I mean, I've been doing this for literally seven, eight years. We've been mounting these in the same spot. So before we had this whole cooler kit, we've been mounting this in the same spot. We relocate them to this corner for two main reasons, I would say. The first reason would be this is where all the fluids, all the reservoirs are, clutch master cylinder, brake master cylinder, 
and now your power steering reservoir. Um, so it kind of keeps everything in the same area with a heat shield usually. So, you know, get, keeps it a little cooler than being right next to the turbo. And that would be the next reason to do this is you kind of, you move this away from the turbo side. So depending on what turbo you have, I mean, some people have top mounts that are literally right here. I've seen them almost contact the reservoir. So, or the intake kind of in the way of the intake system. So moving this over here, you know, kills two birds with one stone pretty much. Now, what do you have to do exactly to do that? Well, luckily, we kind of took care of all the lines and everything, so you don't need to worry about that. That was the most confusing part. Mm -hmm. um, so the only part you need to do now is you need to br bend these brackets. So, like I said, we don't have a stock cooler here because, honestly, most of the cars that come in here, they almost all get moved over here. But I will explain on the bench what you have to do. It's really, it's really not that difficult, but I might as well just show you guys so you don't have to be on your own with this. So I take off the rubber isolators first. So these are usually bent like this, just angled a little bit, or the opposite way, opposite. the opposite way, to get on the strut tower. So we, you basically just need to flatten them out. So if you look at the way this sits right now, it kind of sits flat on the bench. That's the, that's the best way to describe what you have to do. You want to bend those so that it's going to sit flat on a flat surface. And then that's pretty much it. Um, like I said, I mean, this is, this part is kind of, you know, you do it at your discretion almost in a way. It's kind of a DIY kit in a way, but I'll show you where we mount these and then you can pretty much bend the tabs to, to how you see fit. Okay, so the first step to relocating this other than bending the tabs on the reservoir would be you have to relocate your wiper was an amp wiper amp wiper amp this is a wiper amp so you got to relocate this it's only one bolt that holds in a one 10, 10 millimeter bolt unbolt it there's one plug coming through this hole down here uh, what we do is we run this wire to the other side of the of the fender so we pull it out of there, run it to the other side, and then I'm literally going to mount this inside of here using the same nut that's on the chassis. So I'm gonna put this through, same side, I'm gonna rotate it a little bit, and then we're gonna end up threading it back in to the same hole. And it's gonna sit something like this. And then we just run this in here and connect it. Now, some people might say, well, how, do, how am I going to change my wiper relay when it goes bad? Well, you're going to take your fender off. And it's going to happen once in your lifetime of owning the car or less. So it's not really a big deal. Mine's been in there for 10 years. It still hasn't gone bad. So that's the nut cert or, you know, nut mounted to the, to the chassis that we use. So we just use that same one that's mounted on the other side, but from the inside. Um, now, the next part requires drilling because you're going to have to make new mounting holes, unfortunately. Uh, there's just not, there's no way to use the holes that are there, so you have to make new ones. Some things to note while you're doing this. You want this to sit level. You don't want it to be cocked to the side or anything like that. You want it to sit level. Keep that in mind. Another thing to keep in mind, you should probably close your hood and make sure it fits without contacting it. Because I know some people, I know Tom Nazaro has mentioned to me, he's, he mounted his somewhere over here once and his hood was contacting his cap. And I think it was, I don't know what it was doing. He was either tightening it or it was making it loose, something like no, that. No, it, it broke the cap. It broke the cap, okay. <clears throat> so depending on your hood or how high you mount this, you might have contact issues, so keep that in mind. Depending on where you mount this, how high you mount it, you might need to bend this pipe to get it to sit higher. I actually did that with this. So I pro what I did was I probably heated, the, heated this up and I probably put an extension in here and I just bent it up slightly to get that a little higher. The reason I did that was because the higher you can get it off of this wheel well, the better. Because then you can connect the hose to it and then you can sit it, you can mount it a little lower. That must have been the problem I was having. So I just bent that up a little bit and we were able to get clearance. So this sits like this when it's mounted. So I have plenty of room to mount that hose on. 
And then the other one, I don't even touch. That one just stays where it is. But yeah, like I said, the more you bend that, the lower you can mount this in case you have clearance issues with your hood. But yeah, you know, we've been doing this for years now. Um, I know people that's been, that have been relocating this here for decades, so. And that's it. That's pretty much the most confusing <coughs> or do-it-yourself part of this whole thing. And then we just, you mark where you want it and you drill two holes. Put some touch-up paint on it so they don't rust and we include hardware. And we have the two longer 10 millimeter bolts and nuts. And this is what you should use to mount this here. And if you don't want to go through the hassle of relocating the reservoir to the side, you can actually leave this in the stock location and shorten two lines. All right, so we're gonna route the hoses first and then mount this. All right, so you got your hoses. Uh, these are the ones that run to the cooler. Obviously the ones with both ANs on the end are gonna go to the cooler. And the one with the long extension is gonna go to the reservoir. And this AN is gonna go to the rack. So first things first, we are going to fish this kind of through here. I don't know if you can see that. I'm gonna route them through here. A little difficult. Um, I'll be your assistant. That's why it, was, it would be a little bit difficult because you need a second pair of hands. You're basically gonna run this through here. Okay, and then when you get to this side, you're routing, this is going to the reservoir because it's gonna just go on with the hose clamp. So usually this goes under this brake line right here. Usually there's a clip there. This car doesn't have it, it's broken. So usually there's a clip holding this brake line to the frame rail. This can usually fit behind it. So that's the, that's the cleanest way to do it. And then you go under the booster, under the master, the clutch master, and up. And then you're, you're in position. So under the booster, under the clutch master. And then the other line goes to the rack. So we'll leave that down there for now. And we'll, we'll show you later when, when we get to the rack how you're gonna mount that. Uh, I don't know how you guys like to work, but I like putting everything on hand tight first before I finalize anything. So this one, so the 90 degree AN fitting is gonna be the top hose. And then the 45 is going to be the bottom one, and you want it to be facing in an upward orientation. So these are hand tightened. I kind of straightened out the line in here um, against the, I mean, you can see how we have it sit. We have it running against or above the frame rail, but against this apron panel. And then that's pretty much it. Next step. I'll show you where these go. Next up, we're going to install the tight fit rack fittings. Just kidding. We're not going to show you how to install them. We already did that. We have a whole other video on it. So hopefully Malcolm can link that above, below, on the front. I don't know. Uh, but you can come over here and take a look at them. But yeah, they pretty much, you just remove the old lines and install the fittings. It's very simple. These are the tight fit fabrication A N adapter fittings. Those go in there and then you attach the high pressure line and the one line that's running to the cooler. So you got your high pressure hose. It's gonna route this above the cross member or the subframe. And the high pressure hose goes on the fitting closest to the subframe and the one furthest away from the subframe is the return. Okay, just like that in the upward position. Same thing with the return line. So now you have your high pressure hose on and the return hose on, both facing upward. Uh, now we can go back to the top of the car. This hose is a little on the longer side, that way you can route this however you want. What we end up doing is usually 
attaching it to the other ones running along the frame rail. And then this will end up being mounted somewhere like this with a slack underneath the intake. Power steering pump feed line usually comes with something like this. And so you're gonna remove this and then you're gonna end up with something like that. It's just smooth right here with an, with an O-ring on it. Our fitting is offset just like the OEM one, but this is gonna work with dash 10 AN lines. So you're gonna reuse the OEM O-ring, and if you need a new one, you can source one. These are pretty nice. These are Allen keys. Five millimeter Allen. Five millimeter Allen key, yeah. Okay, so you just gotta tighten those down. So you gotta tighten that up. That's it. It's time to put the, the reservoir feed line to the power steering pump. So you're gonna route this one however you want. Um, so we're gonna run this one in front of the brake booster above that brake line down there since it's not gonna fit. And then this is gonna sit underneath the intake as well. And go right to the reservoir. All right, so this is your SR20 power steering pump or dual cam K power steering pump. The OEM banjo fitting that goes right here uses this bracket to keep it from uh, twisting when you're tightening it down. You no longer need this bracket, so we're going to remove that. That's it. No longer need this. All right, after you removed any brackets you don't need anymore, you're going to install the power steering line onto this. You're going to want to take the banjo bolt, the included banjo bolt, and connect it to the power steering pump. Let's see how you do that. You got two crush washers. I'm gonna put it on like this. I'm just gonna snug it up. Make sure it's tight, but you don't want this to rotate, so, you know, it's a fun process, but you figure out a way to do it. Then, you're gonna connect the power steering line to the banjo bolt. And then just snug this up. And that's the high pressure line. And obviously you can rotate this banjo bolt whichever way you need to, to clear the intake. So you drilled the holes, you figured out where the reservoir is gonna sit. Before you mount it, it is easier to put the hoses on before you bolt it up. So you got your clamps, you got one big one, one small one. Obviously the bigger one for the bigger one, smaller one for the smaller one. So you're gonna put your smaller hose on first. You want it to go to the end of this little rib right here. To ensure that you get a good seal. Then you get the bigger hose. Little pro tip with the clamps. So there is a inner rib and a outer rib, pretty much where the clamp is gonna sit in the middle of them. I personally like putting the clamp closer to the rib just to ensure that it's making a proper seal. Same thing on this one. And then uh, now, now they're all tightened down and we're ready to mount. Okay. This chassis was already previously drilled, so we're gonna get our long 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter bolt, put it through the isolator, then through the hole. So now you can see through here, that's where the bolt is gonna come through. This is the closest to the front of the car. And then you're gonna have to try your best to get a nut on it. Then you're gonna get your other bolt, put it through the other hole. Got your 10 millimeter socket. Okay, now it's nice and sturdy. Then you can see here on this side, it's gonna run down here like that, just something like this. And you're kind of gonna secure it with all the other lines. I know it looks crazy right now, but once it's all tidied up, it's gonna look a lot better. Now all the hoses are routed. Uh, you, you Pretty, pretty much you want to make sure that everything fits properly and then it's not chafing anywhere. Now that we 
did all that, we're going to go ahead and tighten all the lines. This is not a 17. And while he's tightening all the lines, I'm going to show you guys where you put these clips. These are the two clips we're including. The first one is a smaller one. So this can go right into this hole right here. You might have two holes on your car or you might have one. We've seen uh, both situations. So this seam seal right here is going to be the first small hole in front of that, which would be this one. So you're going to press this in. Real simple. You're going to go to the top line. You're going to zip tie it like that. That seems to be the cleanest way to do that. And then you just snip that off. Now with these hoses, you kind of want to make sure that they're in the proper orientation going through this hole in the rad support. This one's going to kind of sit straight up. And then we'll tighten the rack. The fit fab rack fittings are already installed. So now we're going to tighten the AN lines. Uh, obviously you don't want the return line on because it's going to get in the way of you tightening the high pressure line. So you want to do the high pressure line first. Now as you tighten this, the line is going to shift a little bit, so you kind of want to hold it somehow so it doesn't spin while you tighten it. Okay. Now you can put your return line on. That's it. Now those are tight. So obviously this is a Sylvia front end. Sylvia front end is going to be the tightest fit, but there is a lot of clearance. So we're just gonna kind of put this back here. This is the hood release. Just gonna put that behind for now. I'm just gonna mock this up so I can show you guys. All right, so this bracket is like kind of snugged up and you can see in the back of it, the reason why you had to pull this off is because getting to these AN lines are very difficult if you don't. So obviously there's about maybe an eighth of an inch clearance, whether it's the top or the bottom. If you have a pop-up front end, you're gonna have close to a quarter to a half inch clearance. All right guys, well, thanks for watching our video of our new power steering cooler and reservoir relocation kit. This has been a long time coming for me. I've been trying to come up with a power steering cooler kit we could sell for years now, but I just never, I never put the time into figuring all the little intricacies of what, what to do with it. But honestly, it's really thanks to Chris for doing this, because he's the one that originally mounted this on AJ's gold uh, 240SX. So that's where this originally was designed. So he's got like the OG brackets that are just made from something we did in here. But uh, yeah, this is our best solution to a power steering kit. Now I know some people, some people mount them out here, which honestly is probably where I'll mount it because I, I just want to see it in the bumper. But that's a, a really bad spot, especially with drifting, because if you get into an accident, which happens often, you could wipe out your power steering cooler and fluid could be all over the track. You're going to ruin the day for other people and yourself. So not to mention if you're doing a comp, no competition car is going to have an oil cooler out here. You'll notice that when you're at Formula Drift or anything like that. So keeping everything inside behind the bash bar is the best way to run them. Now, this is a power steering cooler setup, but we do intend to make an oil cooler setup for the other side. That way you can either run them together, you could run one or the other, it's up to you. So that will hopefully be coming this year. We just have to figure out what parts we want to include, what parts we want to make, um, and which brands we want to use to do that. So hopefully uh, you guys leave us a review, um, like, share, subscribe. And if you do end up ordering one of these kits from the website, just leave a review on the product page. Or if you have any questions, concerns, comments, leave a comment below. I'd love to hear it.